different battles, same fighter. King Ben-Hadad of Syria came up against Israel. The Lord fought for his people and gave them victory over Syria. Then he sent a prophet to tell King Ahab that he should get his army ready because the Syrians will return to attack them again. 1 Kings 20 verses 23 to 25. King Ben-Hadad's officials said to him, The gods of Israel are mountain gods, and that is why the Israelites defeated us. But we will certainly defeat them if we fight them in the plains. Now remove the 32 rulers from their commands and replace them with field commanders. Then call up an army as large as the one that deserted you with the same number of horses and chariots. We will fight the Israelites in the plains, and this time we will defeat them. King Ben-Hadad agreed and followed their advice. That's the Good News translation. The Syrians later set out to fight against Israel, positioning themselves in the plains this time. Then we are told in 1 Kings chapter 20, verses 28 to 30, that a prophet went to King Ahab and said, This is what the Lord says. Because the Syrians say that I am a god of the hills and not of the plains, I will give you victory over their huge army, and you and your people will know that I am the Lord. For seven days, the Syrians and the Israelites stayed in their camps, facing each other. On the seventh day, they started fighting, and the Israelites killed a hundred thousand Syrians. The survivors fled into the city of Afek, where the city walls fell on 27,000 of them. Ben-Hadad also escaped into the city and took refuge in the back room of a house. That's again the Good News translation. Our God is not just the God of the hills, but also of the valleys, mountains, rivers, oceans, lakes, forests, deserts, and everything and everywhere else. So also, God is God in every situation and circumstance. He is God every day, every time, and everywhere. A lot of times, though, Christians seem to forget this truth. God fights for them in the hills, and they rejoice and praise him. If the enemy now wages war against them in the valley, they begin to run helter-skelter because consciously or unconsciously, they think God may not be able to fight for them. There are Christians who fast, pray, and trust God for a good job, and he grants their request. Then when they are faced with challenges and serious battles in the workplace, they automatically conclude that God might not be in a position to help them overcome. They become even worse than unbelievers at playing dirty office politics. Many Christians trust God to deliver them from financial problems, but have difficulty believing that he can heal them when they get sick. Some other believers believe God for a husband, but cannot trust him to keep their spouse faithful. It's very sad to see Christian women who are helicopter wives hovering around their husbands and suspecting them of having an affair with every woman they speak to. In some cases, it is as a result of past occurrences, but in some others, the woman has just been paranoid right from the beginning of their marriage. If God could answer your prayer for a husband, why would you not trust him to keep your marriage and home? Christians who trust God to win battles for them on the hills but cannot believe him to help them in the plains are like Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. As a result of King Solomon's sin against God, he took most of the tribes of Israel from his son, Rehoboam, and gave them to Jeroboam. Then we are told in 1 Kings chapter 12, from verse 26 to 33, that Jeroboam thought to himself, Unless I am careful, the kingdom will return to the dynasty of David. When these people go to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord, they will again give their allegiance to King Rehoboam of Judah. They will kill me and make him their king instead. So, on the advice of his counselors, the king made two gold calves. He said to the people, It is too much trouble for you to worship in Jerusalem. Look, Israel, these are the gods who brought you out of Egypt. He placed these calf idols in Bethel and in Dan, at either end of his kingdom. But this became a great sin, for the people worshipped the idols, traveling as far north as Dan to worship the one there. Jeroboam also erected buildings at the pagan shrines and ordained priests from the common people, those who were not from the priestly tribe of Levi. And Jeroboam instituted a religious festival in Bethel, held on the 15th day of the eighth month, in imitation of the annual festival of shelters in Judah. There at Bethel, he himself offered sacrifices to the calves he had made, and he appointed priests for the pagan shrines he had made. 
So on the 15th day of the eighth month, a day that he himself had designated, Jeroboam offered sacrifices on the altar at Bethel. He instituted a religious festival for Israel, and he went up to the altar to burn incense. That's the New Living Translation. God was able to make Jeroboam king over Israel, but Jeroboam couldn't trust him to help him stay on the throne. Just like Jeroboam, many Christians put their hands into sin because they cannot believe God to handle certain things. If you are one of those Christians who easily trust God to fight and win one battle for them, but have difficulty trusting him when a different battle comes up, pray about the situation. God is not just able to heal. He also has the ability to fight, provide, promote, preserve, restore, and do everything else needed to keep his people peaceful. Remember what he said in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? That's the New International Version. May the Lord help us all in Jesus' name. Amen.